Hey guys, I hope you're having a great day and a great holiday season. Being that it is the holiday season, of course, I'm really busy. I'm running around. I'm hoping I can get to this big announcement for you guys tomorrow. We'll see. Uh, but for today, I wanted to share with you some of my favorite finds of 2016. The year's winding down. I'm hoping I'll get in a few more hunts before the year ends. And I will, of course, do a full wrap-up at the end of the year and show you everything I found. But for today, I wanted to feature my favorite finds from the year and talk to you a little bit about them. So with that said, let's jump right into it. I'm going to run through these chronologically, how I found them through the year, and talk a little bit about each one. So the first relic I want to talk about I found on March 7th of 2016. And I remember the date distinctly. I'm sure I always will. And there's a video of me finding this. It's called the Bad Day Bayonet. And the reason it was a bad day, I've talked about this before, was that one of my best friends and a guy I'd known since we were little kids and a guy that I relic hunted with all the time, my best relic hunting buddy, had committed suicide that morning. And I almost didn't go relic hunting, but I felt like he would want me to. And I got out and started digging signals, and I hadn't always dug iron, but I had gotten into it lately because of my fascination with shells. And sure enough, I dug up not only uh, my very first bayonet, but a bayonet in a site where I had been looking for gun parts. So it was an amazing day. I felt like my buddy was there looking over my shoulder. And not only is this one of my favorite finds for 2016, but one of my favorite finds ever. At that very same site, I also found some of my other favorite finds for 2016. And these you can find in a video entitled, "My One of My Best Relic Hunts Ever. And I think it was a three-part series there. There was so much that happened there. I found the Confederate officer's frock coat there. I found lots of Civil War relics there. And two of them were these. Uh, the first of which is a Confederate snake buckle that went uh, to an infield rifle belt rig. And also in with that was this tag, which is marked S.M. McCamey, Company F, 59th Tennessee Volunteer Infantry, CSA. And this was made after the war and belonged to S.M. McCamey. And also, all of his effects were in the barn that related to the war, the Civil War. His frock coat, his tin cups, several Civil War items, and I think others were in the barn that had gone missing over the years. So, one of the most amazing hunts of my life, and certainly some of my favorite finds of the year. Chronologically moving along, we have to get to this rifle barrel. There's a video called Civil War Rifle Barrel in the Creek or something along those lines where you can see me find this. Uh, a Civil War Rifle was on my list of things I wanted to find for the year and although this isn't the entire rifle this was enough to satisfy my urge. I found this at the site of a very large Civil War battle and I had hunted all day without finding anything and I got out into some water that was just about up to my neck got a signal, and started digging down. I ended up digging through uh, two or three feet of rock, and finally my magnet attached to this, pulled it out, and of course the rest is history. Um, it made my day, made my hunt, and is one of my favorite finds of the year. Next, chronologically, we have to get to these artillery shells, and these were found at two different hunts, so I'll talk about them each separately. Uh, the first of which is this Hotchkiss shell. Now this is the smallest variety of Hotchkiss shells they made. It's a pretty rare shell. This one is very crumbly and uh, has had a lot of corrosion done to it. I'm still in the process of preserving this one. And I went on to find another shell, that, or another artillery piece later that day, which I'll share with you in the end of the year wrap up. But Really love that piece because I found it with Mike, and every hunt I get to hunt with him really means a lot to me. So not only did I get a great piece of artillery, but a great memory with my buddy. The next artillery piece I'm going to talk about is this 12-pound explosive Borman shell from the Civil War. And I found this when I was out hunting alone. It was another instance of hunting all day and not finding much of anything. 
I pretty much thought the day was going to be a bust. And I was hiking my way back out, got a great signal, stuck the magnet down, and pulled out a cannonball. Just blew my mind that I actually turned one up that day, and this was actually the last good water relic that I found of the year. So it's one of my favorites. I really love this one and can't wait to get it all cleaned up. And, of course, I would be remiss to go without mentioning my trip to the Button Mine. This is one of my favorite hunts of my entire life. Not only because I got to hunt with my dad and Bob Milburn, who are two of the most important figures in my relic hunting life, but also because we found just an amazing amount of relics. I came home with over 800 relics, 700 and something buttons. It was just unreal, mind-blowing trip. Really hoping we can do it again next year. But possibly my favorite find from that entire trip would have to be this Eagle A button or Eagle Artillery button. And this is pre-Civil War. It's a one-piece button and is the earliest artillery button that I have. Now this button, we were all hunting together. We were shoveling buckets full of buttons and dumping them on a screen and sifting through them and grabbing buttons that we saw and throwing them in buckets. But there were a couple buttons that caught our eyes that we knew a certain person should have. There were some revenue cutter service buttons, some Coast Guard buttons. We knew my dad should have those. He was in the Coast Guard. There were some buttons that caught Bob's eye, the early uh, swastika buttons, and several other buttons that caught his eye. And at one point, Bob reached in and grabbed a button, and I audibly heard him gasp. And he drew in air and he ran down to a beam of sunlight and he was holding it up and he said, I know what this is. It's an Eagle A button. And he came back and he said, you should have this, Chris. And he gave it to me. He said, stick it in your pocket. And this is just one of the most fascinating buttons I have. Really love this button. And it's a testament not only to uh, Bob's friendship, but to his generosity and to the generosity of your relic hunting buddies. You know, sometimes you find a piece and a relic hunting buddy just loves that piece and you know that it should belong to them because they're going to keep it and it's going to make them happy and they're going to preserve that piece of history. And this was an instance of that and a good example of what great relic hunting buddies are like. So I want to encourage you to carry generosity on into your life, not only in this holiday season, but throughout the year. It's a great way to live your life, and if you can share a piece of yourself, whether it's your time or your knowledge or your things with someone and enrich their lives, it's a really great thing. So, hope that this enriched your guys' life a little bit, and I'll see you guys tomorrow in theory. I want to do my big announcement tomorrow, but I'm just, I'm not sure it's going to work out. There's a lot of miles in between here and the big announcement, but we'll see what happens. See you tomorrow.